Comes a time in life you got to talk about stuff you don't really want to talk about. And I'm going to talk about it today. 1998-99 Tennessee Titans. We'll do it right here on Locked on Jaguars. You are Locked on Jaguars, your daily Jacksonville Jaguars podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. You're damn right. It's your team every day here on Locked on Jaguars, where it's your team every day. We thank you for making us your first listen. I am here to let you know that we are free to subscribe to on our YouTube page. Just slide on over there, hit that like button, subscribe, and then hit that bell so you get notifications and notified each and every time we drop an episode here on Locked on Jaguars. Also, I'll let you know right now, wherever you get your audio podcast, tap in over there. Make sure you don't miss an episode when you're sneaking around in your cubicle or in your car, don't want to be looking at TV, make sure you tap in so you don't miss an episode. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms definitely apply. Shout out to the Everydayers for joining us every day. You can be an Everyday. All you got to do is join us every day. All right, got it. I'm doing this little series of mine this week the week that started off with Memorial Day, and I'm remembering things, some things I don't want to remember about the Jaguars' past, but I'm trying to go through moments and memories that made uh, my fandom what it is today. I'm going to give you an outline right now of what we're going to do. It's them damn Titans. That's the way I said it. I'm going to keep saying it because that's the way I feel. Almost a quarter century later, man, and that thing still hurts. Over a quarter century and that thing still hurts. Uh, that 1989-99 season, 1998-99 season hurts. By the time this show ends, you'll realize why the Jags still hate the Titans to this day. Why 15 and three, and it, it was that was good, and it also felt bad. It was awful when it ended. And now for the first segment, we're not going to hold this any longer. You can see I'm gasping here, man, because this one hurts, and I know Jaguar fans don't like it. But we're going through our memory, just like when we open our family uh, photo album. You see a whole bunch of your family members you probably don't even like. You might see somebody that stole from you and everything else. But somebody said, who is that? You got to tell them. So I'm going to tell you all what makes up the moments in the history that makes the Jaguar fans, fan base, and even me, Anthony Wiggins, who he is and what he is and how he feels about the team. Um, I, I did this because a lot of folks – Look at the Jaguars fans and think, well, first of all, Jaguars on the uh, social media app is crazy. And folks look at them like they are. Um, they're the ultimate, most misunderstood people. The first thing you need to understand about Jaguar fans that people clearly don't understand is do not come for them on social media. It ain't going to end well. And trust me, I do the dozens and rank and Joan better than anybody. I can pick at anybody. I'm telling you, I'll make your mama laugh at your funeral. That's how good I am at it. But I will tell you this. The Jaguars, I call them the faithful, the faithful 50,000. I think about 25,000 of that faithful 50,000. They come from the same school I come from because they quick and they pull it from the hip, man, and they'll bust you in your face with it, right? So it's a lot that goes into Jaguars Twitter that a lot of people learned about the hard way. What made them that way, though? How did they what what kind of school of hard knocks have these fans emotionally gone through that that make them who they are? Well, you about to hear it. You might hear the biggest one today. I said some stuff yesterday about getting the three AFC championship games and never winning and having and that being the only that's weird that that's the only success you have. It's like you ain't had it just a little bit when you have some success. Like they've been in the playoffs, I think what five six times in 27 years and i'm and i didn't look it up because i don't want to be exact that's what it feels like that's what it feels like even if that's not it i think that's what it is too three of those times they went to the afc championship game you know there's a there are a lot of teams that haven't gone to afc championship that game championship level game uh in that shorter span of a time that have been in the playoffs a lot more more years 
So they've had a lot more consistency and a, and a lot less variance in how up or down, what do they call it, being unflappable? How up or down can things get, right? Well, I'm telling you how up and down things can get. They can get really up and down, especially if you're a Jacksonville Jaguar fan. So uh, one of the things that we really have to focus on and pay attention to is we always have to know why fans are the way that they are, right? And I'll flat out tell you, in my opinion, fans are the way they are mainly because of the Tennessee Titans. Not them and not them alone, but they are the biggest culprit of any hangover that the Jaguar fans, especially the non-new fans. Like if you if you ain't if you're not at least 19, oh well, I can't say 19 because if you're 19, you really don't know what the hell I'm talking about. If you're not 30, three. Let me just add that. I got to throw that three in there because the 33 makes it okay. From 1999 to now is, is 24, 25 years. Do that at least be, be seven or eight to really understand fully how 19, I mean, 1998, 1999, how hurtful it was because the Jaguars were only two years removed from going to the AFC championship game, like two years before that. Right. I want you to listen to this. I'm going to read this straight off of Wikipedia. All right. And this, this, this is the thing that, in my opinion, this is the thing that, like, soon as, it's, not even, it's on Wiki, but it's not really on Wiki. As soon as you type it up on Google, this is the first thing that pops up. And, and this is all in bold letters, right? So this will tell you exactly how significant this was. The Jags finished 0 3 against the Titans in 1999 and 15 and 0 against the rest of the NFL. Both teams make the playoffs, each ending an eight plus season playoff droughts. Tennessee's playoff berth was clinched with their week 17 meeting at home. They said Derrick Henry ran runs for a 99 yard touchdown. No, he didn't because he wasn't even there. Derrick Henry is my cousin. Derrick Henry wasn't even. Uh, he, was he born? No, nah, yeah, he was born, but he was a little boy. Derrick Henry didn't have nothing to do with it. This was all Eddie Joyce. See, sometimes you get misinformation, too. So I'm gonna, I took the first – the first part was right. The rest of it wasn't, right? I just read it to you verbatim. But this was Eddie George. This is the late Steve McNair, Frank Wycheck, Javon Kirst, Blaine Bishop. I can name too many of those guys. The reason why I can name too many of them is because I can't stand them. And they know it. I talked to Blaine Bishop quite often over the years. He just laugh at me. Fred Taylor says the Jaguars were better than the Titans. I'm gonna go through. The, I'm gonna go through those games, and I'm gonna show you why. As much as I love Fred Taylor, and I get what he's saying, they were more complete. I'm gonna show you exactly why they weren't better. And I'm sorry because the only way you prove that you're better is you gotta win. One time, okay. Two times, I got it. Three times, nah. The better team won. I got a feeling if the Titans and the Jaguars would have lined up 10 straight weeks after that, that championship game, the Titans would have won all 10. It would have been hard, but they would have won all 10. And I know there's a bunch of people that will disagree with me. That team had something that was kryptonite to Jacksonville. That team had something that was kryptonite to Jacksonville because you can't tell me that in three wins with a great coach like Tom Coughlin, with all of those great players, Jimmy Smith, Fred Taylor, Tony Baselli, Tony Brackens, you can't tell me they couldn't find one uh, way to win one of those games. And it ain't like Tennessee was full of gimmicks, like they're going to hit you with all these crazy big plays. They're just going to muscle it, right? They're just going to they're just gonna pound you. Just just keep grinding. Just, just keep running the ball right down your throat. It, that's why I don't think the Jags were better because at some point I think that physicality got a hold of them. I want to go through every game of the Jacksonville Jaguars 1998 season. And I'm going to do it because I want to show you just how dominant the Jaguars were on paper. And for some reason, they just could not beat the stinking, stinking Tennessee Titans. And one of those losses to the Titans, they got blown out. So that's why I kind of feel the way that I feel. All memories aren't good. All memories aren't bad. But they all are memories. And we're talking about that here. Talking about the Titans. So we're chronologically moving around a little bit. I had to hit you yesterday with the 
this is the early years. This is what this is all about. This is how they, but now I'm hitting you with the, okay, let me get to the one, the thing in their history. That is the thing that drove us crazy. And that still drives us crazy. And tomorrow we'll talk about Pittsburgh. And then after that, we'll talk about a whole bunch of great moments. There were a bunch of great moments that led up to this Titans game. There's some magic, a lot of magic in the way that they played. 62-7 against Miami. How about that? That's one of your memories. And we're going to include it in this one because that was a week before this. Retiring Jimmy Johnson uh, with the Dolphins, and Dan Marino, and, and, and beating them 62-7 to in a game that I was so excited. I was all the way up in the 400 section freezing. And the game was over in the first quarter. I wanted to go home. I think we left at halftime, if I'm not mistaken. Fred Taylor ran a touchdown for over 91 yards, and Brock Marion almost killed himself trying to catch him. All of that had everybody thinking the Jaguars were the hottest team in the land, and then they were going to exact revenge in the AFC Championship game on their rival. And then something happened that wasn't supposed to happen. I'm going to talk, talk to you and tell you about all that in just a second here on Locked on Jaguars. Got to tell you about Game Time, man. The Game Time app is the absolute truth. And if you're trying to buy tickets late, the last minute, save you some money, get good deals, this is the place to go. Tickets to what? Football, basketball, hockey, concerts, wrestling? Yes, all of that stuff. And Game Time is the place for you to do it. Now, I know all your life you've been hearing people say, don't let your lack of planning become my emergency. You will not hit game time say anything of that foolishness because your lack of planning is actually their expertise. Last minute deals is their priority where you save up to 60% off buying last minute for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, etc. Download the game time app, create an account and use the code locked on NFL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code locked on NFL. I'll spell it for you. L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-F-L. For twenty dollars off your first purchase, download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Rolling along here, locked on Jaguars, where it's your team every day. We thank you for making us your first listen. On paper, the Jacksonville Jaguars were better than the Tennessee Titans that year against. Other opponents, I think the Jaguars were better than the Tennessee Titans. That's why the Titans beat them twice and the Jaguars still had home field advantage. The Jaguars had a bye throughout the playoffs, right? I mean, they were just they were just whipping people. They could do it in a passing game, in a running game. They could rush the passer. They could cover. There was so much stuff, man. There was just so much stuff where the Jacksonville Jaguars were just too damn good. Just too damn good. And they were way, way better, way better than the Tennessee Titans. But it doesn't matter. They didn't win. And when you don't win, that's all that everybody cares about. They care about whether you win or not. And the Jaguars, had we've had to wear that around here for a long, long time. And I'm sitting here and I'm pulling this up and it is just absolutely killing me. It's killing me that, that, that I have to tell you all this and that we have to talk about this. Let's go through the schedule real quick. September 12th, opening day, 49ers. Jaguars beat them 41 to 3. September 19th, 22-20 over Carolina. Carolina was a good team back then, though. All right. They lose by one point after being up 17 to seven in week three against the Titans, 20 to 19. So we were like, man, we're going to get our revenge. We ain't going to let this. We can't let that happen. Right. So now they go on this terrific run. They beat Pittsburgh. They beat the Jets, both playoff caliber teams. They beat Cleveland. They're smoking people. Right. After the Titans lost, they went three straight games and nobody scored 10 points. And then finally, the Bengals scored 10 and they beat Jack. They lost to Jacksonville 41 to 10. Then they went back to holding teams to less than 10 points. The Falcons only got seven. And then they helped. They beat Baltimore six to three. And that's a good Baltimore team. You know, that's the Ray Lewis Baltimore team. And I remember that game. It was hard play, real hard play game. 
Y'all know the Jaguars ain't losing no games, but I'm going to still go ahead and go through it with you just to show you what these scores are. The Saints, they beat the Saints 41-23, beat Baltimore again 30-23. to Then went and beat Pittsburgh again. This is when they were in the same division with Pittsburgh, Cleveland, Cincinnati, and Baltimore back in the day. We'll discuss that later on because realignment. That's why the Pittsburgh Steelers are, are in this as something that is huge in the memory, in my memory, and in the moments of Jacksonville, because when before realignment, the Pittsburgh Steelers were in their division, along with the Titans and the Browns and the, and the Bengals. They beat Denver 27-24 on the road uh, at home. They beat Cleveland 24-14. So now it's getting close to the end of the year. We go back to Tennessee uh in week 15 this is supposed to be the revenge game they got blown out 41 to 14 and this is the game where i sit here and i say that's why i don't think they were better because mark Burnell threw three picks in this game he threw three picks in the first game against the titans so right now in two games he has one touchdown and six interceptions you are not beating them that way it's not gonna happen he only had one other game where he threw multiple interceptions and that was against baltimore but he also, he also only had two games where he didn't throw an interception. So this is how you have to look back at these numbers and say, hey, man, this dude was a little bit of a turnover machine, right? Yeah. This is what you have to do. You have to really be honest with yourself. But then the Jaguars get to the playoffs, win 62-7, and then get their wig split in half. Wig split in half by the Tennessee Titans. Again, the game, you know, it's 33-14. It's rough, man. So that's why I don't say you scored 28 points. You played the team two times in four weeks. You scored 28 points and you gave up 74. I don't see how you can ever say you're better than them. I don't. And then after having a 17-7 to uh, lead, you lose – 20 to 19. So that means that they outscored you 13 to 2. So you add the 13 to 2 to the 40 to the uh to the points you scored in the other games. So add the 13 to the the 14, and that's 27. And then the 14 again, that's 41. You scored 41 points since you had that that lead. You scored 41 points all year on this team, right? Is that correct? No, that's not 41. 14 and 14, that's 28. Yeah, that's right. You scored 30. 30 points after you had a 17-7 league, and that team scores 84 points. You can't be considered better than them. They outscore you 84 to 30 in two – Two games in a quarter. You just can't be, man. No matter how I want to say it, no matter how you want to say it, this to me is, while the best year the Jaguars has ever had, you also have the worst memory. So that just hit me right there. The best season they've ever had also provided the worst memory, maybe the worst two memories. One of them is losing to them three times, and the other one is, that being the reason that you didn't go to the Super Bowl when you probably were one of the two best teams in the, in, in the entire NFL. That's the hard part that you have to look at if you're the Jaguars. That, that stinks. That sucks, man. That the, the fact that I hate those dudes. I'm going to tell you why to this day the Jaguars still hate them. And the fans still hate them. And they should. They hate us too, but that's all right. But I'm going to tell you why you should hate them. I thought we got revenge on them last year in 2022, well, the year before last in 2022, by beating them so we could go into the playoffs. Those jokers tried to stop us from going to the playoffs, and I was laughing. I'm like, you ain't going to stop us from going to the playoffs. We're we going to make the playoffs, and the Jaguars did make the playoffs. I didn't laugh too long, though, because guess what happened? I'm going to tell you what happened in just a second. Y'all should know what happened. It ain't nothing good. If you're watching Fox Sports or ESPN, if you were watching them back then, you knew what happened. But if you're doing that and all on your TV all day and have to turn down the volume with all the shouting, make the switch to Locked On Sports Today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel 
program for you every day to bring you the biggest sports stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24 7 on YouTube or the Free Fire TV channels at part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I will tell you why the Jaguars rightfully hate the Titans still to this day. I'll do it just a second here on Locked On Jaguars. Got to let y'all know about FanDuel first, man. FanDuel is the absolute truth, and if you want to make you some money, you need to get in on FanDuel. First of all, if you can make a bet with a $5 bet and it wins, you're going to get 150 bucks in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's right. Once I give you this code to sign in on. That's right. Right now, new fan, new fan, new customers get 150 bucks. And I know you. it's in bonus bets now, and I know what you're looking at. You're looking at the NBA, the NHL, and Major League Baseball. Them boys in the NBA, man, they're going for it. Ain't no more load management. Everybody's going for it right now trying to win championships. So, therefore, you should feel really, really comfortable that every single day everybody on each team is going to play. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make every playoff shot count. FanDuel is America's number one sports book. Remember, you get 150 bucks in bonus bets if you have a winning $5 bet. Your old third, final, second hill, Locked on Jaguars. Where it's your team every day. We thank you for making us your first listen. I'm the host of the Locked on Jaguars podcast, Tony Wiggins. We've been talking about memories and moments that create our thought process, our activities, our mindset when it comes to the Jacksonville Jaguars. We've touched on some bad stuff today because I had to get this out of the way after the first day letting you guys know exactly how I feel. So here's what we're going to do. We're doing this Wednesday, Thursday, and then Friday, we're going to talk about the optimism of the season that is and what we can realistically look forward to and how to brace ourselves and start shaping ourselves for training camp and all of that stuff. So I'm going to do all of that for you. I'm going to make sure we take care of that. But right now, I got to let you know that um, ever since 1998-99, this team still hates the Tennessee Titans. We've had some moments since then. Derrick Henry on a Thursday night running around just stiff-arming everybody and their mama. Matter of fact, if I rewatched the game, I wouldn't be surprised if he was stiff-arming coaches too. And I can't remember who the dude was. I think it was a linebacker that we had here, number 48, Jacobs, out of Wisconsin. I think he dragged that boy about 12 yards on the sideline into the end zone on Thursday night. And Derrick Henry's done that a lot to Jacksonville. And it hurts because Derrick Henry – He's a distant cousin of my wife's, and he's from Uli, which is from where I live, about five miles north. And I saw him do it in high school, and then I saw him do it in college, and then he came, and he does it to his own team. Now, thankfully, he plays for the Baltimore Ravens, but we'll see if we can avoid him again. But Jeff Fisher, the Titans, this weird history with Jacksonville, this area, including in the death of Steve McNair, a fan was from Jacksonville. It's just this intertwined, um, just intertwined, just, I don't know, I don't like y'all type stuff. They're getting a stadium, we're getting a stadium. The commissioner's talking about putting a Super Bowl there, and we hate it. We can't stand it. Even though if I was a billionaire, I probably would buy a second house. I'd stay in Florida because of the beaches, but I'd probably go up in those mountains in Franklin, Tennessee. I just wouldn't wear any Jaguars gear, but I kind of like that area a little bit. But I don't like them. I don't like the Titans, and you shouldn't either. How could a team that had Eddie George all those years just running all over people like he was a grown man playing against kids at recess, and then they get Derrick Henry, he does it again too for a decade. That just It just feels like the football gods hurt us on that one, right? And then they took a guy from Jacksonville and put him over there. All right, you can go get Eddie George back and leave him where he was. So this is kind of irrational thoughts that come along when you start thinking about the Tennessee Titans. Shout out to my man Tyler Rowland too from Tic Tac Titans, the Tennessee Titans, locked on Titans. I, I reached out to him. Tyler's doing his thing with his family. But I told him, you know, I was be making these, these these videos, and he was like, he laughed. He was like, okay. But I'm sure he'll get a kick out of this one. I'm sure he will. They don't like y'all, and we don't like them. My man Cap went and punched somebody in the face in the bathroom up there, and he was outnumbered, like 700 to 1. But that's, well, 700 to 3 or something like that. That's all right. It didn't matter, but that's what Duval is. That's what we do. We do stuff like that. Titan fans, all they come do it. They come in, they drink mayonnaise. 
and make a bunch of noise outside. Like we, you know, we don't care about that when you come up here. We come up there, though. You better watch your mouth. That's just the way the Jaguars roll. It's the way Jaguar social media rolls. That's how we do. But we do all of that with the Tennessee Titans because we didn't beat them in 1998-99. Mm -mm. The greatest season the Jaguars ever had also ended with the greatest disappointment that this team has ever had. Last year when we could have been, remember we kept talking about how we're trying to piece these seasons together? Well, last year we were trying to piece two seasons together. I think they did okay in like 98-99, right? We tried to piece these two seasons together again and uh didn't work. Didn't work because we needed to win one more game, and we went to Tennessee last year in 2023 and got bullied. Just made everybody forget about the year before when we luckily won a game that got us into the playoffs. Can you imagine if they lost that one too? And they were down with about two and a half, three minutes left to go on the clock. They needed a miracle play to win it. Can you imagine? Can you imagine what Trevor Lawrence would be going through right now if he lost that game to Josh Dobbs? And they never get in the playoffs to make the great comeback. It's funny how one or two games will change the entire trajectory of the way that we feel about a player. It's also funny how one or two games can change the entire trajectory of an, uh, of an entire franchise, which this AFC championship game did in 1999 here in Jacksonville. It changed everything. And those suckers had luckily got there because of the Music City Miracle they, they had to survive. They had to scrape and scratch just to make it to the next round while Jacksonville was doing the Watusi and breakdancing all over Jimmy Johnson and Dan Marino in Miami. And then the next week, those jokers, just it's almost like they just said, just let us get back to Jacksonville. Just one more game, bro. One more game. If you're watching on YouTube, I'm going to take you into the mind of me real quick. If you notice right here over this left shoulder, right? You see those little things sticking in off the screen? I thought that something was wrong with my screen. Turns out I forgot that plant was over here in the corner. And I was wondering, what the hell is that? I thought it was something trying to sneak up behind me. But that's the benefit of watching on YouTube. You don't get that. But I had to tell the people who aren't watching on YouTube that's what was going on. If I'm rocking back and forth on the TV or if my voice is wavering, I'm trying to make sure there ain't like some killer plant behind me because I, I forgot that plant was over there. I was wondering, what the hell are those little things sticking on this screen? When you lose to the Tennessee Titans three times in one year, 30 years later, you start talking to people about plants attacking you. This is what happens. And see, this is what has us crazy here in Jacksonville. And now they think Will Levis is the answer. Will Levis. I woke up this morning, some stuff on the internet. I don't even know if it's true, but my man Will Levis might be off the chain too, right? Um, but Will Levis. Calvin Ridley added to it this year by going up there and playing with them. I do. I am afraid of their front office because I, I think Rand Carthorne can be a real good GM. And now that they don't have Mike Vrabel, they're going to open it up offensively and they're going to run what they got Callahan up there as the coach. You got Bill Callahan as the line, offensive line coach. They're going to run a lot of stuff you see in Cincinnati. And they got the receivers to do it. Do they have the quarterback to do it? That is the question. And do, do they have the offensive line? I know they went out of their way to fix it by drafting J.C. Latham, but can the Jaguars take a step to the point where they're not sitting there side by side with teams like Tennessee? At some point, if you're going to be good, you got to be good. And if you're going to be good, you got to be able to beat your rivals. And there's no rival that you need to beat more consistently over and over in the future than the Tennessee Titans. We, we got to change this. This has been going on for almost 30 years and, and, and it's still all hanging all over people's head and it's not going away. It's not, it's not going to go away until they, they start beating them regularly and then they start winning and they win something that the Titans haven't won. You can do something that a lot of people should be doing, even though they're not. You can watch Locked On Sports Today because Locked On has launched the first ever national 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube and now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the Free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now, available on the free Fire TV channels app. I'll be back tomorrow, y'all, to talk about those Pittsburgh Steelers. We ain't got that bad of a history with them, though, because we, we, we actually 
we've had our share of victories against Pittsburgh. And right now, I think we're still up on them. But man, 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 over the years, the memories have been something else with those Pittsburgh Steelers. So more moments and memories for the next couple of days here in Jacksonville. As yesterday, we celebrated Memorial Day for those that made sacrifices for us in the military. And we are grateful to them and their families. But we're also grateful to you that we can entertain you here every day on Locked On Jaguars and on the entire Locked On Podcast Network all together because it is truly your team every day. All right, take care of each other. Thanks for joining. We'll see you next time.